Hey guys, if you really like this episode, please support our podcast by going to talkmurder.com slash join and becoming a Talco Supremo. Ladies, if this case doesn't make you think hard about the guys you've dated in the past, I don't know what will. Now, we've all heard of psycho ex-boyfriends before, but this killer raises the bar to a whole new level. Welcome to Talk Murder to Me. We're here recording tonight for a taco special episode where we do requests from our taco supremos who have asked us to tell a story either that they was a hometown story that they're somewhat involved in or just you know a story that they want us to do so this is the sober edition of talk murder to me we got really drunk on the last episode if you guys noticed yeah i apologize for all the um the the rants, tangents, and um, repetitive times I said, you're a pussy, to quote super bad. I don't know why I was really into quoting that. Did anyone guess the thing? Shit. She No. Mm-mm. All right, so we got some lovely comments from one of our Supremos, Lamegs, on Talk Murder. Lamegs. About the Dylan Roof case. She said, loved hearing this story, which is good because I was worried. (laughs) It's weird to hear current events that we have been alive to hear about on Mm. the news. Amen. And a lot of podcasts won't even touch this, even with a 10-foot pole. Like, we all have connections here, very close to the story, active in the sense that we're kind of like waiting for this guy to be on. He's on death row, but waiting for his execution type deal. So she says... What a monster he is to decimate a church. Amen. I also wanted to chime in on the topic of global warming. <laughs> we did talk about global warming quite, quite, a, bit. quite a long time. When we re listened to the episode, we were like, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't really know a lot about it, but the thing is, but the thing I think about is, the earth doesn't need us. That's true. That is true. It would be better off without us. So <laughs> true. That's kind of dark, but. Yeah, dark. We need the earth, so we better start taking care of her. Oh, I like how she put the feminine. Yeah, there. like Mother Nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. That's good. Um, I think that's kind of what we were saying. Country you know? boy, Mother Nature's son. Also, all day long, I sit and play a song for everyone. I think those are the lyrics. Also, gonna have to get on my diver soapbox. Everyone, listen out there. If you heard the Dylan Roof episode, there may have been some drunk guy talking about swimming with dolphins. <laughs> so she says, I love that y'all swim with the dolphins, but please, please, please don't touch them. Even if they initiate contact, they do not understand the consequences. The slimy feeling of marine life is a protective coating that protects against bacteria and infection. When you touch them, you remove this coating and leave them susceptible to infection. Keep exploring the ocean. Interact when it is welcome, but take only pictures and leave only bubbles. I love that. And that she, is very interesting. Oh, we talked. To, we had a long conversation. Man. We were talking about um, killer whales with the Sea World a while yeah. back with um, with Megan. I miss she, everything. She also sent me some pictures of her <gasps> diving. She is a hobbyist diver, and she takes wow. all kinds of pictures. Some nice photos. Some really interesting stuff. I asked her if she found any treasure before, but she has not. That's so cool, though. Like, But I'm sad because I wish I got to touch a dolphin before I knew that. Yeah, I promised her that I would never touch a dolphin again. But that does not include when the dolphins ram me with their beaks, because that does happen. <laughs> that did, yeah, I, that would did be you know really that scary. Dolphins that have been known to rape humans. <laughs> That is so stupid, Jen. That what? doesn't make any sense. It's true. <clears throat> Look it up. Google it. Like, Dolphins you have mean been with no- their nose. No, like 
you Ten. know. Dolphins rape humans. Or maybe it's other dolphins. I don't know. I, no, it's other it dolphins. Look. It's other dolphins. Oh. It's other dolphins. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you sure? Jen. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I heard? I'm like really sure. You know what I've been hearing? On BuzzFeed, what? What? <laughs> humans are going and raping blue whales, blue tooth whales, Ew. or whatever. Blue tooth whales. Blue tooth whales. They got like music playing now. They're blue. Oh, <laughs> blue tooth whales. <laughs> it's not it? connecting. <laughs> I don't understand. What is it? Bluetooth? No. No blue, blue whales. whales. Blue whales. You see how that sounds ridiculous? She also posted a link for any veterans out there. Patriots for disabled divers. Hmm. They um. They do diving lessons for veterans with PTSD and any other disability. So check that out. That's kind of cool. Actually, someone at work um, this past week sent me um, the information about the um, – I forget what the actual the official name is, like surf, Surfing for Warriors or whatever. Warri- I think it's called Warrior Surf. And um, it's about the, the group that goes – teaches you how to surf for veterans. Um, and they go to – shim creek every sunday to like sell clothing and stuff oh, cool. but apparently they, it's for families too so oh, like cool. so we could all go yeah we could all go le- learn how to surf i want to learn how to surf i also want to learn how to paddleboard and we all know that i want to go learn play the drums when i'm done with school almost i got one more month well two more months mm, one and a half one and a half because you'll be <clears> done in early august right yeah Almost there. All right, so I lied to you guys. We are actually drinking. I mean, you know what this is. We're drinking just beer. And I'm drinking a truly hard seltzer. I think I like the hard claw more. Really? Yeah, I'm. I'll be honest. I like that at first, but I think you, I don't. I think don't you like can it taste towards the, the end. It's just I don't know. <clears throat> I like I the cherry like flavor because it tasted like juicy juice. Tonight we are doing a taco special for one of our supremos. Yes. Anyone want to guess who that Supremo may be? Wayne. Wayne's World. Party time. Excellent. No, it's not Wayne. Mm. Mm, you guys suck. So we... Are, well, let, let where me, are we going? How about yeah. that? Tell us where we're yeah, going. Tell us where All we're right. going. Well, first, before I tell you where we're going, I need the help of our third place geography <laughs> bee, Nicole Laporte, to explain the difference between Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Kansas. Well, we already talked about this. We've before. talked about this multiple times. It's not for me. It's for people that don't know. Maybe they come in and this is the first episode they listen to. It's not for me. All right. Well, I I feel like Jen should take this way because she clarified it the last time. Well, no, she's been there. So you don't know. No, but I I wanted to give Jen credit for getting it the first time. The only reason I know is because one there. of our other Taco Supremos and one of my very dear friends, Kristen, spent some time living in Kansas City, Missouri. And we do have another Taco Supremo in Lauren. Kansas City. Yeah. Um, so Kansas City, Kansas is in Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri is in Missouri. It's but the same, same city, Will you though. let me finish? <laughs> I was just about to say that. Why the hell did they do that? I so know. I saw people, they were like, why can't people get this right? Well, why'd you make it so damn confusing? You know what I'm saying? Can, it's one city c- can, uh, divided up by the state line. Right. But it is confusing. I agree. Like, if they named it, like, if it the, was some other name other than. Why don't they do Kansas, Kansas City name, 1 you know? and Kansas City 2? Why didn't – or let's just make it simple. Why didn't the surveyors, when they were drawing up the state lines, put it over a few extra miles so you only have Kansas City, Kansas? Well, maybe the city just grew after the surveyors. No, well, there, there was no surveyors. This was Lewis and Clark with their compass. Whatever. The city grew. It's fine. And expanded beyond state lines. But it is confusing. If it was, if it was a one, city name, city should be in the central location of a state. That well, just makes sense because well, if it, you need to get resources, but cities are ev- that like there are the cities biggest everywhere. city, the capital city, should be in the center of the state. But that's not the capital city. Then what is the capital city? There's two capital cities because it's two states. There's no, no. There's well, there's a capital in. Kansas, and there's a capital in Missouri. Yeah, that's what I just said. What's the capital city of Kansas? 
Topeka. Topeka. Oh, oh I got shit. it. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I always think of like tapioca pudding when I think of Topeka, Kansas. Yeah. All right. So anyway, we're going to Kansas City, Missouri tonight. Back to the home of Bob Berdella. This is for our Talco Supremo and very good friend, Alicia. Alicia. Oh, right. Hey, Alicia. Hey, this Alicia. is her first story she requested. She Thanks. also requested a big story, which I cannot wait to get to. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah, that is definitely coming up. And guys, if you want to submit more stories, you know, keep them coming. Can I request us to do some stories? Yeah, I want to request some stories too. No. Tonight we are going to Alicia's hometown, and mm. she actually wrote in to me so i'm going to be reading some of her mm. some of her email about the story it's a very wicked case and alicia drove by the gypsy rose house a yeah that was her back. yeah yeah i, I need Snapped to put that pic. picture um i put it on instagram oh yeah so yeah that follow was really instagram. cool the house is no longer pink it's a light gray color free gypsy rose no gypsy if you ever need a place to stay, you can come stay with us. Absolutely not. I already saged the house. Jen, she is a victim. So, yeah. So, this past weekend, guys, we finally saged the house. And little did I know that sage actually smells similar to marijuana. It smells awful. No, it smells great. Marijuana it smells, smells like great. A church. It smells gross. G- people that smoke marijuana, and not me because I don't, but people that smoke it love the smell. Right. It's a really great smell. I think it smells nasty. But anyway, so I went around the house and I staged the house. Nicole came behind me with the Febreze. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so we should be all set to go. Have you guys felt a difference in energy? I'm going to be honest, Jen, no. <laughs> no, me either. I don't know if it was actually sage that they sent me. Cause Maybe I it was marijuana it. leaves. No, it was not marijuana. Yeah, I'm I, kidding. I didn't feel any energy, but I did get a little buzzed. <laughs> um, I did not feel a change in energy, but I ordered it from Amazon, and I was kind of suspicious because it came rolled up in, like, newspaper, and I was like, I don't know about this. And then I... Uh, I saged the house, and I was like, I still don't know about this. What are you going to do with the leftovers? Oh, you you never know. We might need it again. All right, so here's where we're going, guys. Belton High School. Okay. Okay. We're going to a high school tonight, guys. Belton Uh, High School. We're not Um, doing another mass shooting, are we? No, no mass shooting. This story is really not media popular. So tonight we're talking about Kara Kapetsky. She was last seen on May 4th, 2007, leaving the Belton High School. Now, she was actually on video surveillance leaving the school. This was about 1030. In the okay. morning? Yeah, in the morning. What? How old was she? At the time, she was 17. Oh, so she was probably a senior, but 1030. wonder where she was going. I'm showing them a video of her leaving the school. I know a girl that looks like that. That's her walking out of the school. That's the last time anyone has seen her. Okay, she is a missing person, or she Hmm. was a missing person. So that was May 4th, 2007. Now, her last cell phone call was made at 1030. She calls her mother and asks her mother to bring her textbook, her history textbook, to class because she forgot it. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep that in mind because it's important. So she, uh, so like, sorry, I I know... I don't mean to interrupt you already, but I'm just trying to p- put a timeline together. So she called her mom and asked her to bring textbook at 1030, and we also see her walking out. So she supposedly was getting the textbook from her mother when she uh, left the building? Uh, no. Sorry, go ahead. No, and I'll get to that. She was. She actually went to Target. I'm going I'm to get to that. But the last call she made was at 1030 to her mother asking her to bring her history textbook and to wash her uniform for work. Now, she works at one of my favorite places. Chick-fil-A? No, close. <laughs> Jimmy John's. I hop. No. No, you were close to the chicken. Bojangles? Close. Popeye? Yes! <laughs> I love Popeye's. Oh, me too. Dude, Never they're... Um, love that chicken from yeah, Popeye's. They're... Uh, she obviously failed to show up for her class later that day. She didn't even come back to school. Now, her parents got worried when she didn't show up at her job, and 
they decided to file, you know, a missing persons report mm-hmm. with the Belton Police Department. Now, the Belton Police Department is going to come up in this story. Oh, for great. their for Another their wonderful no, police. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, like for the their Cheshire. lack of enthusiasm for solving a case hmm. kind of thing. They get a lot of hate, and they should because they kind of suck. I'm not going to lie. But just before she disappeared, about one month before she walked out of that high school in 2007, she filed a restraining order hmm. against her ex-boyfriend. That's pretty serious for 17 years old. Yeah. This is Kara Kapetsky's restraining order. I'm just going to read it. She filed this one month before she goes missing. Saturday, uh, 428, kidnapped, restrained, one month ago, choked me, had a knife in his hand and said, quote, I'm going to slit your motherfucking throat. The little box to write in now says, an immediate and present danger are of abuse to the child exists because she's a child. Mm. She's 17. Because I'm unsure of what he will do next because the abuse has gotten worse over time. The abuse. Yeah. Where uh, well, the so he's already... fuck are the cops at? She filed this a month before she goes <sighs> missing. She says, I don't know what he's going to do next. Do you guys want to see a picture of this guy? Yeah. All right, here we go. For sure. And I'm going to put a bunch of links on Talk Murder. This is her ex-boyfriend, if you guys want to comment. This is... Oh, no. His Ooh. name is Kyler. Kyler? K-Y-L-R. K-Y-L-R. That's his legal name? Like he was given that name? Yes, that Vowels is Vowels are so overrated. That's like Kyle, but Kyler. This is his name. If I saw his... Kyler. If I saw his name written out, I would, and I was calling roll in a class, I would say, Clur. Clur. <laughs> Clur. <laughs> Clur used. <laughs> Does anyone have a Clur used in here? Clur. Cooler. <laughs> Why would the parents name him Cooler? Maybe they didn't know what, what they were tra- like. Uh, they definitely naming the monster. I saw on one comment, it was like, just his name screams killer to me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, also, the the neck tattoo and oh, that's not his only tattoos. Sna- what is it? This what is it called? Snake, snake bites. bites. Yeah. There's his tattoos. <gasps> oh, whoa! That's him, butt ass <sighs> naked, showing his tattoos off <laughs> with a Motorola. Ew, what <laughs> is all that? It's like uh, not even. It's they're less, like demonic. Yeah. I don't, How old is he? So he was 19 years old at the time of disappearance. All right. So she. Was still in high school. Number one, all right, if you, I don't wanna make anybody mad, but if you're dating a girl in high school and you're not in high school, it's statutory rape. Well, if you're having sex. I I agree. I agree. Yes, it technically is. No, only if they're 16 or younger. Or younger than 16. Below 18. No. Well, here's the thing. What states? Look it up. I don't know. Maybe he met her when he was a senior and she was a sophomore type of thing. Maybe they met in high school. I'm not defending. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that maybe that's the circumstance. Maybe that's why there was that age difference. Yeah, maybe. Because up, upperclassmen dating lower classmen is not too uncommon. Clur Yurst. I'm going to start calling him Clur. Clur. Kyler. I don't even want to say his name. It's such a douchey name man it's like kyle but instead of an e it's an r i mean that doesn't even there's no vowels in this sometimes there are no not in k-y-l-e-i-o-u and sometimes y no i'm saying in his name there's no vowels why no real vowels why is not a vowel sometimes it is it can be that's bullshit my that's what class, the rule is i don't make the rules john I, I don't make the rules <laughs> okay why is never my a vowel. sometimes it is you, you give me one yes. word with why is a vowel kyle Clur. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> without his name. Cry. Yeah. N- uh, that does not act as a vowel. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. How? Because you Do can't you, have a word with sound. just consonants. Is there a word out there with just consonants? Yes. What? S H. It's a words of friends words. Shh. It is, is it not? I, no. I it don't. It is. S H. 
is a word. Well, if SH can words. be a word with <laughs> just consonants, then Y can be a vowel. It means like some Greek something. All right. So did so did she run away? That's what the Belton police automatically thought, and they really suck <laughs> because. They didn't even really investigate anything, and I'm going to get into that. Cyst. But, is there a reason? Cyst is another word where Y acts oh, as a geez. vowel. C-Y-S-T. Cyst. What about sticks? That has an I. No, the band. Yeah, I guess that would count, too. Oh, I'm just proving myself wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Authorities initially believe that Kara left on her own accord since she had a history of running away for days. Well, but really? That's, that's why I that's said. That's a valid like, conclu- yeah, it's valid, but that's why I said, who did she call? Her mother. Her to get what? Her textbook. textbook. And her work That uniform. shows what? That she was going to come back to exactly. school. Exactly. And that she was going to go to work after. Exactly. Boom, shaka laka, and she didn't go to work or come back to school. So sometime between 1030 and whenever, a few hours later, She's gone. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, this case didn't really get the media attention like it should have. And a part of the problem was Belton Police, and they get a lot of shit. Every, every YouTube video you see about this case, there are people just bashing this police department, man. Hmm. But authorities initially believed she left on her own own accord since she has a history of running away. But that's what I said about the calling her mom. However, since she disappeared, she has not accessed her bank account. So she's running away. She didn't access the $150 that was in her bank account. She didn't use her cell phone. That's weird. She left behind clothing, cigarettes, makeup, hair straightener, iPod, iPod, yes, debit card, and other personal belongings and also, her ATM card was found in her backpack in her locker. What's the difference between that and the debit card? Same thing. I, I just wanted to use both terms. I'm trying to improve my word ratio here. ATM! Oh, no, that's got a vowel in it. Yep. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> also, it's an abbreviation. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know when you say PIN number, you don't have to say number because... P-I-N stands for personal identification number. Hmm. So if you say PIN number, you're saying personal identification number number. A little bit about Kara. She was born February 17th, 1990. Now, Kyle, or excuse me, not Kyle, Kyler was born in 88. So he was only two years apart. That's not that bad. Now, she went missing May 4th, as I said, 2007. At the time of her disappearance, she was 17 White female, brown hair, hazel eyes, five foot five, one hundred ten pounds, missing from Belton. Okay, now let's talk about this Clur guy. Who is Clur? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love that this is happening. It's so Stop much... trying to make Clur happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's so much. <laughs> it's so much easier to it say is, this real right? name, Clur, because I keep wanting to say Kyle. Right? <laughs> I wonder if they're trying to like make combine the words Skylar and Kyle. No, because Kyler is a name. I literally think I it's never heard of there's a re- there's a, a seafood place in New Bedford called Kyler's Catch Seafood. It's maybe a last name or but I've never seen it as a first name, but they spell it K Y L E R. Kyler. But but it, I have heard it before, but I've never seen it like that. So we're but not as him. a first name. No. Well, you could call him Kyler, but even still, I've never seen it as Clur. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that made no sense. Okay. Is, so, Clur is like the male version of Claire. I might. Hey, Which guys. I really like that not name. Clur yet. <laughs> I really, yeah, it is. I really like the name Claire. If like I Claire would've... Foy, she's in the crown or she was in the crown. She's awesome. When I was little <laughs> and I went to my Nana's house, um, I had a doll and she had blonde hair and her name was Claire. Because she told me that's what the name was. All right, so we are looking at no, like my nana. It was like her. Oh, I thought you were saying the doll told you. No, <laughs> no, her name was like that's. And that is why name. Jen believes in ghosts, <laughs> because she played with a possessed doll when she was a child. <laughs> no, my nana said that her name was Claire because it was like my aunt's or something. I don't Fuck, know. Fuck, that was creepy. Yeah. Now, one of the things about this case is everyone, everyone knew that Kyler did it from the get go. 
Why do okay. they know that? How do they know that? I'll get into that. He caught a body. Shit. Shit. And Kyler has a huge rap sheet. This is from 2012. On Are there any is, songs that I would know? This is one indictment, just one. I hate when my jokes fall out. <laughs> on or about February 24th, 2012, in Jackson County, in the Western District of Missouri, the defendant, Kyler C. Yust, did knowingly and intentionally p- possess with the intent to distribute a mixture and substance containing a detectable amount of 4 methyl a methylcatenone. I'm sorry if I'm... Ketonin? Methylcanonin. Ketonin? Me- methylcatenone. How do you spell it? How do you spell it? Jen, I ain't going to spell it. It was like 30 letters long. I'm just trying to help. Methylcanatmanon. A schedule... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Canatmanon. A schedule one control substance. All right. Anyway, this drug, I looked up the drug because I didn't know what it was. I can't say it. But it Meth? is on a Wikipedia article, it said that it was thought to be a stimulant and an intactogen drug. So then I had to go look up what an intactogen <laughs> drug was. <laughs> and from what I figured out, it's like ecstasy. So he's huh. basically oh. selling ecstasy mixed with Adderall. That's what I think this is. Oh, if it's wrong, dangerous. I'm sorry. I don't snort this shit. Now, that's just one of many charges from this guy. This guy's. This guy, Clur, has been in and out of the prison system since he was in high school. Now, he's also incredibly, incredibly sickening to the bone marrow abusive. I was going to uh, say, say, is there any violent crimes? It is awful. And we're going to read all of it. Now, this is an incident report from 2011. So did he have uh, violent crimes at at the time of that disappearance the, on his record? The only violent crimes this guy commits is against his girlfriends when they mm. and you'll hear this later when they break up with him. Ah. He gets all but hurt and it's like eh, I can't take it. Can someone say control freak? Nicole, can you please read this incident report from 2011 the best you can? A lot of it's redacted, so just try your best. Why do they call that redacted? Because it's redacted. But I know, why can't they just say they crossed a bunch of it out? Like, why is the <laughs> word redacted? Well, that's a, a whole lot of extra <laughs> words there. Um, Blank stated that on 7-26-2011, she was sitting at home eating dinner with her daughter, and her daughter told her she needed to tell her something. Blank stated that her daughter began to cry and said, Kyler tried to kill me. Blank stated her daughter pulled her to the side and showed her several bruises up and down both legs. Stated her daughter continued stating that Eust held her down and choked her one night until she threw up all over herself. Mm. Blank stated that she continued stating Eust started hitting and slapping her. Blank stated she did not understand. Blank stated she continued stating Eust had threatened to kill her and she would be dead if she left him. Blank stated her daughter continued stating that Eust told her to create fear that he had family with a ranch where there were pigs that would eat anything, including bones, that he had seen arms ripped off people while they were still alive and had seen people dropped in barrels of acid to destroy evidence. He told her no one would ever find her and that he had had limited resources. Well, that's just awful. Like, that's gross. It's like the... um, um, Hannibal movie, where the yeah. killer pig. Oh, that's um, that was uh, Red Dragon. That was Hannibal. Hannibal. That was Third Hannibal. One? Yeah, mm-hmm. Red I Dragon. Seen that one. Who? What was that guy in? That Red Dragon guy. He was in a Liam really Neeson. Good... No, no, that wasn't Liam Neeson. No, that's the guy from um, the guy that plays Voldemort. Oh right, uh, not that. I didn't see that. Uh, Fiends. Oh, Fiends. Not bringing up yeah, Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, yeah. Ralph. 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 I don't want to bring up Harry Potter. All right. Do you know that Vans is releasing new Harry All Potter right, come sneakers? come on, let's do it. So, Blank agreed to speak with me and conducted the interview at Blank, 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 Blank. During my interview, Blank made the following statements. She had recently posted some messages on the computer website, Facebook, regarding Yust, Ky- Kyler Yust. Uh, She stated that she made comments on the computer website Facebook because she was wanting to tell 
all of her girlfriends that Yust was extremely dangerous and violent. She stated on approximately July 22nd or 23rd, 2011 at approximately 0 hundred to 0 400 hours. Do you know what that is, Jen? Yes, midnight to 4 a.m. There you go. I know military time. Quiz me. Just, okay, um, 2100. Nine o'clock. All right, um, 1735. 535 Fuck. p.m. Just came home there to the residence and was extremely intoxicated. She stated that they got into, an, into a verbal altercation regarding that she wanted to end the relationship with Yust, and Yust grabbed her by both hands, dragging her to the bedroom. She stated that Yust pinned her on the bed with his legs while she was laying flat on her back, motionless. Stated Yust used his legs to hold her arms down where she could not move or get up. Yust looked into her eyes, grinding his teeth, and licking his lips Ooh. as he placed both hands around her neck. Stated, she began to scream, but Yus stated, if you scream again, I'll kill you. Faster than you can let out another scream out of your throat. Hmm. Yus continued to strangle her until she almost lost consciousness. And she stated that when she almost lost consciousness, Yus would have Yust would stop strangling her and turn around, intentionally punching her in the legs, the thigh area, mm. to stop her from losing consciousness. She stated that Yust continued acting out this method for several times that night, intentionally. He strangled her until she almost lost consciousness, Jeez. punching her in the legs mm. so she'll regain consciousness. Oh, my gosh. This continued until she finally lost consciousness, stating that when she regained consciousness, she felt Yust laying beside her, as she describes, quote, spooning me. Yust was laying directly behind her body and whispering, I love you. Whoa, oh, no. that's fucking creepy. Whispering, I love you in her ear. Not today, sir. Stated that she stated that sometime during this incident, Yus pulled out her hair from her back, Ugh. the back left side of her head. She stated she attempted to retrieve the large portion of hair that was pulled out from the back and stated that Yus had grabbed the hair from her hands and burned the hair to destroy Ugh. evidence. <gasps> Holy fuck. I didn't get down this far. This is crazy. Uh, <laughs> Then Yust said, I will kill you and your family. Further stating, Yust told her he would kill her little sister if she ever went to police about this incident. Now, th this just got started. During the strangulation, Yust made the following statement. I've killed people before. What? Even ex-girlfriends <gasps> out of sheer jealousy. Oh, shit. And I will kill you. Oh, my God. This victim stated that she has never called the police because the fear of her being killed and her little sister was threatened. I mean, this guy's a fucking nut job. Right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Total total lunatic. It all started the day he was born when his parents named him Clur. <laughs> Here's a different one that I'm, I'm going to bring up later. This is a different one. The, the call comes in to the police station. White female, 18 years old, seven and a half weeks pregnant, keeps calling hysterically saying that her boyfriend, Kyler Yurst, scared her and stormed out. He threatened her. The, whoever wrote this, I'm sorry. It's just not, I guess they were typing really fast because they were mm. calling all cars and stuff. Anyway, this victim, pregnant, seven and a half weeks. Uh. Just wanted to throw that out there. Wow, that's like barely pregnant. She stated that in the last month, Yust has sent her several text messages wanting to get back together. She stated that the text messages from Yust told her to either get back with him or he was going to hang himself oh my and kill himself. She also stated that she is currently pregnant with twins by Yust mm. and has been dating him for approximately six months. Life lesson, if someone you want to date has even ever been been in some connection with a past murder, even though if he says he didn't, then don't date him. 
He's probably lying. Well, that, yeah, I would say that's a pretty damn big red flag. Yeah. But these girls are keep dating them, man. Like, this but is like. But maybe they don't know. I mean, they're. This is back in 2007, no, before they, Facebook dude, was even like a serious? real thing. They, a name like that, you type that shit into Google, that, the first damn thing. He's maybe the only not, one in the world with that damn name. Maybe they're not. All his arrest record is going to come up right then and there. I they didn't know. look him up. I don't know. Maybe I looked they didn't. everyone up. I looked you up. What'd you find? I found all kinds of stuff. Nice. You where, guys your look where your mom lives, you know, you how much anything, you make. Because there's another famous Nicole Laporte out there. Did you guys find anything about me? Did you look me up? No, we didn't really no. care. We found you on Craigslist. Didn't look anybody up. I found you on Craigslist. She stated that one and a half months ago, she came home from work and observed Yust in the bathroom holding. Oh, my God. I did read this earlier. Oh, no. All right. Let's take a break. Let's just all collect our thoughts here. What was he doing in the bathroom? If you got earmuffs and you like cats. Oh. Oh, no. Then you put them on. It's fair warning. I'm about to say something, and if you like cats, then you might want to just put your earmuffs on. Warning, Taco Supremos. Yeah. She came home from work and observed Yust in the bathroom holding one of their kittens and stated as Yust was holding the kitten in his hands, he began to slam the kitten on the floor <gasps> repeatedly. Oh bow, my God, bow, no. bow, bow. Why? Because he's a fucking monster. Stated Yust continued slamming the kitten on the floor and she tried to stop him and oh he just God. kept slamming the bathroom door and locked her out. She stated that she could hear Yus continue beating the kitten on the bathroom floor, intentionally killing the kitten. Oh she stated that God. Yus left the residence with the kitten and disposed of the kitten's dead body. She stated that this is not the first time she has observed Yus intentionally try to harm a kitten in front of her. Then why the fuck are you still there? Agreed. What the shit? And why haven't you called, like, animal authorities? She stated... That she had two other kittens and just picked them up and placed them into a brown sack. And then he tied the brown sack off where the kittens were still alive inside of it. Then he left the residence and walked back to a creek located behind their apartment complex. And Yust threw the brown sack, which still contained <gasps> oh the alive God. kittens, into the creek. Oh, my God. Yust intentionally did this because he said the kittens didn't, didn't deserve to live. Well, you don't deserve to live. No shit. <laughs> you never deserve to live. This is uh, one witness report says she stated that she had just found out approximately three weeks ago that Yust was a possible suspect through a computer website, Google, when she typed in, Kyle, 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 Yurst into the internet. She observed several articles regarding Kara Kapetsky's disappearance. Well, there you go. Oh, so this is after. And, yeah, this is 2011. Remember, she went 2007. Oh. So th no one I has we ever still been. I in 2007. I well, got confused. The time we're at right now, no one has ever been convicted of Kara Kapetsky's murder. And in, in 2011 fact, or today? 2007. No, I mean, today is different. Period. No period. one's been charged. No, no one. I mean, no, I mean, that's not true. That's not what I said. Oh. I'm just not talking about today. Okay, this is what Alicia says from her email about this, about this wicked man. Do you want to read it since you're a girl? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's see what right. that has to do with anything, but okay. I was in middle school when Kara went missing, so I wasn't following her case when it happened. Belton is not a super small town, but it rattled everyone. I know Kara had been dating Kyler Yus, the spelling of the name screams killer to me, lol, for quite a while, and that he already had a history of being violent and possessive over her. I heard that she tried to break up with him and that he wasn't taking it well at all. She left school early and I know she went to Target at some point that day. Some things I've read say she was abducted from Target, but others aren't super clear on when she actually went missing. Then she didn't show up for work and everyone started searching. I've heard reports that her phone records indicated that he had called her several times that day. Yust was a suspect, but they didn't have any evidence. So this shitbag Yust guy goes about his life like nothing ever happened. Yeah, mm. this guy's a real piece of shit, I'm telling you. We've covered some of the biggest pieces of shit out there. Yeah, you know? he's an asshole. 
Mm-hmm. Regardless of it, whether or not, I mean, right now we're saying like he allegedly killed her, but kind of an asshole either way. Yeah. Killing cats, being a yep. abusive to girlfriends and people. Ugh. All right, this is Bachelor number one, Kyle Lurst. These allegations were very similar to the uh, domestic violence abuse cases in the Carter Kopetsky case. You, you see the similarities in the allegations? No comment. He doesn't comment. Two months later after this charge, he was also charged with animal cruelty, but two months later, he was indicted yet again for a felony theft where his former boss at Lucky Lady Tattoos... Of course he wears a tattoo place. Claimed Kyler stole more than $500 of tattoo equipment. Wow. So he's in and out of prison like crazy. You guys understand that, right? Mm. Well, but, but, like, he needs to have some bigger fucking sentences. Yeah, no shit. Um, now, multiple witnesses, up to three separate people, have claimed that Kyler Yurst confessed to them that he killed Kara. This is one incident report right here. I made contact, and this is heavily redacted. Do you want to read this? All right, Nicole can read it since she likes to read things. I do. I made contact with Blank, and I asked if he knew any information pertaining to the disappearance of Kara Kopetsky. Blank stated yes. Stated Blank had confessed to killing Kopetsky one night when they were in Belton, Missouri, back in the winter of 2007. Blank stated that they were together one night and they were extremely intoxicated. Blank set, stated, began to cry and say, I killed Kara. Blank stated after Blank confessed to the murder, he recalls telling Blank to stop talking about the murder because he didn't want to hear about it. Blank stated why he told Blank to stop talking at the time because he was scared to hear about a murder. Blank stated Blank stopped talking about the murder when they all went back home. Blank stated he does not remember any of the other details about the murder or a possible location of Kopetsky's body. Blank stated he told his girlfriend at the time, Blank, about Blank confessing to the murder. See case report Blank in regard to this incident. That's kind of irresponsible. All right. The redactions in what Nicole read may have came from Caitlin Ferris. I don't know if that was her actual statement because it's redacted, but she did come publicly forward. She was also an ex-girlfriend. Now, Caitlin said that Kyler has also told her that he killed Kara. In fact, she says that they were dating, that he was dating Kara and he loved her. She then told him she wanted to break up and he freaked out and killed her. The family did hire a private investigator, and she... But, all right, I'm going to get to this, but the police department, Belton Police, they suck, man. Like, they're awful, and I'm going to get to why they suck in a second. I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to be mean, but they are pretty awful in this case. Perhaps inadequate here. Yeah. Very inadequate. So anyway, the private investigator actually went out and found other witnesses to come forward, and this is the actual voice recording that she made of one of the witnesses. He's admitted to it to me. He told me he killed her. And he said, I've seen girls' faces turn purple. I've ever seen the wife leave someone's eyes. And I got really scared at that point. He told me a lot of the things he did to her before he killed her. That's what and up. What, what, is, what is that? Beating her, like, listening to her scream for her parents, listening to her cry and beg for her life and how much she loved it. What are you thinking? So, yeah, he's a monster. Yeah, I'd say so. It's clear to me that he's guilty, but even if he wasn't, for you to make something like that up is even more effed up. You know what I mean? Like, Here's his poor old grandpa talking about him. This is kind of sad because he kind of thinks that he's innocent. Pretty good kid. Back in first grade, he went to Spring Valley over here. Mm-hmm. And they uh, and he had high IQ. He was in the class of the more than a first grade or second grader would be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But. That's sad. Things, things change, I guess. 
And have you talked to Ken at all? A little bit. Little what does he think? I talked to him the other night, and he said, I just can't talk right now. I mean, is he broken up, or what's... Well, kind of, I don't know. Maybe he couldn't do that, but he said if he's doing it, maybe he has to stop. Right, right. But you had high hopes that he was on the right track. Yeah, I did. When he got out of prison? Tell me about that. Did you just feel, was he different, or... Huh? Was he different? Did he act different when he got out of prison? No, he was, uh, got a couple jobs, you know, stuff like that. And Worked at a tattoo parlor? Huh? Did he work at a tattoo parlor? No, he did years ago, I think. Okay. What were his jobs right now? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I worked Kansas someplace here, doing bumpers for cars. Mm. All right, that was from an interview with the Kansas City Star. That was his grandpa, which he was living at home with his grandpa. His grandpa seems like a really nice man. It's mm. kind of sad. Let's talk about the Belton Police Department and how they mishandled the case from what everyone says. Lieutenant Brad Swanson from the Belton PD got a lot of pushback about this case because he and his task force were treating it like a missing persons case. Now, Kara, they thought, ran away. Mm -hmm. Okay makes sense but it took two months for the police to even release the security video of her walking out of the school and not only that Kara's locker wasn't even opened until school let out for the summer and it wasn't even opened what? by the police it was opened by the janitor and the janitor calls the family of the missing girl and says, if you don't come pick up this stuff, we're going to throw it away. What? Oh, that's awful. So too. you tell me how thorough this police department did if they didn't even check her freaking locker. For was there, reals? Was there anything in there? Yes, there was a lot of shit in there. For instance, her ATM card was in her backpack, in her locker. They were treating it as a runaway case. Her ATM card was in her locker. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you don't leave that in your locker if you're going to run away. Agreed. Agreed. Multiple, plus, not only that, multiple witnesses. I mean, you've heard all the testimony. Multiple witnesses have came forward and filed incident reports saying that he has killed her and he confessed to them. And what did they do? Not a damn Shitting thing. They didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing. And this is Kara's mom. Kara's mom, poor woman. She has, I mean, it's, I don't know how she has any faith in this police department. I'm just saying. I really don't feel like they want to find my daughter. I don't. I think they just want us to go away. She says they want her to go away. And I can kind of see it. Now, James R. Person, which was the chief of police for Belton, Missouri Police Department says, quote, there have been thousands of man hours logged and over 500 reports generated by our department, end quote. Why didn't you check the girl's locker? <laughs> like, what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> are you serious? I mean, even if it was a missing persons report, like, that's probably an avenue you should check. Yeah. Anyway. They like, didn't do anything. That's the thing. They the did powder. nothing at all. And, like, the reporters... The media was, was hounding him. The lieutenant I was talking about earlier, he got on there and was like, just because y'all haven't seen anything doesn't mean we're not doing anything. This is a closed case. We can't tell you everything we're doing, a.k.a. we're not doing shit. Excuse. We're not doing shit. shit. <laughs> All righty then. So now what happens? And the reason I'm so pissed about that is because our next part of the story, a girl named Jessica Runyons, last seen September 8th, 2016 at 9.30 oh, no. No shit. p.m., driving a 2012 black Chevy Equinox, last seen at a house party with... Claire? Claire Yurst. <sighs> They left together. This is what our Taco Supremo Alicia says, and you can read this since you're a girl. When Jessica went missing, her mom called the police. She missed a doctor's appointment and hasn't called since the night before, and her mom knew something was wrong. This was crazy because as things started unfolding, they weren't making any, making any sense. Here's how we found things out. 
Jessica had a boyfriend at the time, and they were at a party with some friends the night before she went missing. Somehow the boyfriend left, and Jessica gets a ride home with a quote-unquote friend who just so happens to be Yust. Well, they can't find Yust. He isn't at his grandpa's house where he lives. Hmm. Jessica Runyon's parents reported her missing when she missed her doctor's appointment the next morning. Now, this is from 41 Action News, which was a news station that covered this entire case. This is what her car looked like when they found it. It continues for a 21-year-old Raymour woman, Jessica Runyon's. And we're learning more about the person she was last seen with, Kyle Eust. Police have found her Wait, car. Wait, he said Kyle. Yeah, he did. In Blue Ridge. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to fucking say it. It's Clur, dude. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Yeah, that's right. Police were out here along with search dogs, and they left not too long ago. This is what's left of Jessica Runyon's car. Part of a tire, what? an emblem from her car, and broken glass. Now, Jessica Runyon's and Cara Kapetsky, who's been missing for nine years, have something in common. Kyler used. So do you see why I am so hard on the Belton Police Department right now? Because they could have had this guy locked up, and he wouldn't have killed this other girl. Because he definitely killed both of them. And not only that, but that witness report, that one before this incident, what did he say? He said something. He said, quote, I've killed people. How many other True. people has he killed? True. You know what I'm saying? How many other well, innocent it's girls? Interesting. I was going to ask when we started, when you started talking about this, if there was more than one person missing connected with him. And lo and behold, yeah. we have it. This is about Jessica Runyon's car. Uh, our talkers Primo had some good insights about that. So if you want to read this, Nicole. They find her car in Grandview on a road surrounded by woods, and it's all burned up. At this point, Jessica's mom arranged search parties, and they would search the woods every weekend. But they never had any luck. The police finally found Yes in a different city and took him into custody. His face was all scratched. He had burns everywhere, and he looked rough. Obviously, Jessica put up one hell of a fight. He gets questioned, is held for burning her vehicle. I guess they had him on the gas station filling a can of gas. Then nothing new came up about it. Hmm. Again. And you should see Hell, this guy. Like they they like know that he burned her car. Well, look at this guy. This guy has clearly got burns all over his face. Look at all the burns on oh, his my face. Goodness. Oh wow, yeah, that's pretty prominent. Yeah. Like he's definitely been in a car fire. <laughs> I mean, come on. Look at that. They're like all over his face. Yep. This guy is such a piece of trash, man. On one interview, this pissed me off. I don't even want to play it. One of the reporters says, did you kill Jessica Runyon's? And he just looks at the camera and says, did you? <laughs> and he walks away. Did you kill Jessica? Did you? Like, what, what a, a fucking bag. idiot, man. Anyway, all right. Kyle Yust gets let go again. Because now he's back on the street, just like always. Belton Police is getting all these leads and doing all these man hour searches and stuff like that or whatever they're not doing. There were two bodies found in the woods huh. by mushroom hunters. Oh. And I don't think they're I don't think they're mushroom hunters like getting high. No, like they're looking no. for good mushrooms. Yeah, yeah like the shit like I take. The kind you eat. Yeah. Maybe. I read it in. Now Kansascity.com. This is from Kansascity.com. Mushroom hunters find human bones in rural Cass County. Now, Cass County is the county, obviously. I don't need to say that. A mushroom hunter found human bones in a wooded area south of Belton in Cass County on Monday afternoon. According to Cass County Sheriff's Office, the hunter called deputies to an area near East 223rd and State Route Y around 3.40 p.m. It was not clear how long the bones have been in the area, Cass County Sheriff Jeff Weaver says the age, race, sex of the victim is also unknown. Now, I want to say they found two complete, not complete, they found two sets of human bones. One that took a few months for them to get DNA back because it was so, I don't know, it kind of looked like it's been there since, I don't know, 2007. And the other one, more recent, I don't know, let's say 2016, you see what I'm saying? Mm, mm -hmm. This hunter found both of the girls, Jessica Runyon's and Kara Kapetsky, 
Definitely together? Like, definitely together. But d- it's definitely them. It is definitely them. DNA proved it. Yes, DNA proved it. It oh, is what definitely the shit? them. It's this guy. Well, yeah, it's always been no, this guy. No, I know, but like, I, that's not evidence <laughs> to find It is both. evidence. I, mean, I haven't gotten to the end of the story. Oh, okay. You think this guy's just walking around? Yeah. <laughs> I thought this, where we were this isn't Canada, Nicole. <laughs> I thought this is where we were going this whole time. Holy shit. Now, this is the two mothers. We know that you guys received a press release, and at this time, they have not been able to make a solid identification of, it's still just skeletal remains. We do know that there is, they've located two skulls, and um, they really, they didn't give us any idea on how much time it would be before they knew. They are them, this is before they identified them. We're still, still waiting going to be waiting for the foreseeable future but they said they would keep us informed and let us know as any anything new comes in so i just wanted to show you the, the faces of them because they are obviously really fed up with the police department mm-hmm. so and i doubt they even called them to be honest i mean they well, probably heard about knows. it from the fucking news <laughs> it's sad but i mean this police department really did not do anything you know, I mean, they didn't even check the girl's locker. That just makes me mad. And this other girl is dead now because they, they didn't couldn't take solve an this case. The first yes, time, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right, let's end this case. Let's talk about the trial and sentencing. Yes, he did get arrested. KansasCity.com reports that the murder trial has been set for the fall of 2019. Now, oh, here, that's upcoming. Yes, that is next months or so. The clerk reminds me of, um, there's like this, like microbes that they always talk about in the, um, that whales eat krill. <laughs> yeah. Krill, yeah. Krill. <laughs> krill. Not krill. They're like yeah. little shrimp. You mean the Bluetooth things. whales? Yeah. They're like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The Bluetooth whales eat <laughs> clerk. Whatever. I the they... <laughs> All right. Now. The little shrimpies. All right. So this is from Alicia. She says, no, I'm talking about the trial here. She says, I know nothing about when this trial is supposed to be, but I do know this ass hat. <laughs> ass hat. Okay. I use that all the time. That's a word. I also like the word douche bucket. Douche bucket. They, <laughs> douche ca- <laughs> and, douche, and douche canoe. I like That's douche my favorite. brigade. <laughs> douche canoe. Douche brigade. I love douche canoe. Douche canoe. <laughs> That's, That's my fave. Ass hat. I gotta, I gotta start using that more. <laughs> I feel like ass hat should be one word, though. She has it as two. It could be hyphenated. I don't know. Yeah, I'm seeing hyphenated. So I read an article, I don't know, a few years ago, that some some couple named their uh, baby Shathid, and if you spell it out, it's shithead. (laughs) (laughs) That sucks. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Shathid. What the fuck? (laughs) Why don't you just name him Clur? That's like my dad was telling me a story. <laughs> my dad was telling me a story once about um, someone he he m- met when he went out to one of his company's plants in uh, Tampa, and their son's name was Lamangelo, but it was spelled out Lemonjello. <laughs> Lemangelo. <laughs> Holy shit! All right, so. But I do know this ass hat was included in a lawsuit to sue. Oh my God. Listen to this. I do know this ass hat was included in a lawsuit to sue the jail he was in for bad living conditions. Oh, please. That sounds like uh, Todd Kohlhepp did that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she says, and to- uh, Ted Bundy. She says, mm-hmm. th- which pisses, pissed, a lot of S's there, pissed me off. Like, you killed two women. What on earth makes you feel like you even remotely deserve proper living conditions? Ugh. Yeah, I, I agree with you agreed. there. Alicia. Yeah, agreed. You know? They should send them over to Russia. Remember when we watched Chernobyl? Mm-hmm. Hard what? labor. Yeah, 10 years of hard labor. And it ain't I like... I know. You know what? Like It ain't like picking up trash on the side of the street here. No. You're, you're making big rocks into small rocks in Russia. And you ain't eating and you're getting beat the what shit out Paul of everything. What was that Paul Newman movie that we were watching? <laughs> huh? What was that old Paul... Cool Hand Luke. That was a hard yeah. labor prison in the United States. Yeah, but no, also Russia in prisons. Also in Les Mis. Les Miserables. No, no yeah, but I'm, American prisons have... They would never compare. No, I'm just saying. We, I don't know. Like, do, does America even have hard labor prisons? Well, we have Leavenworth. Which is a military prison. But is that hard labor? Yeah. 
We is watched that, that movie, remember? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Red, but is Robert that the, Redford. But is that the only hard labor? No, there is. There, all right, there is in, in, in Arizona, I believe, and you can, sorry if I've, I've got my states wrong, but in Arizona, there is a prison warden out there that does not believe in letting inmates have TVs and basketball gyms. They all sleep in tents outside in the hmm. Arizona sun and they work all day. Wow. And they say they have that prison that he runs has the least um turn the least uh turnover so when people like get out of prison rate? yeah return rate hmm. from every prison in the United States because people don't want to go there. <laughs> I was going to ask about Alcatraz and I almost called it Azkaban. <laughs> 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 Um, but uh, yes, but I, that doesn't exist anymore. I know. But I, like, I don't know if they, if there are any others that really exist, but it's an interesting thought. Like, I kind of think that's the way prison should be, mm -hmm. but I think these our prisoners get TVs and, and they I can know. sue the prison if the, the if their HBO doesn't I'm come clear. I'm not saying that they shouldn't have a, <laughs> like... They shouldn't have shit. Living. They shouldn't have shit. They're fucking prisoners, man. They broke the law of society. Agreed. No, no, no. They should I'm not saying, have shit. I'm they saying, I be... think they should have fair living conditions, but I think that they no. should be put to work. No, I don't think they should have fair list. I think our, I think, and personally, our judicial system is way too soft. Okay, I think... there are some countries, if you steal, you're getting your hand cut off. Can you imagine that here? No. Do you think that someone with one hand is going to go and steal something else? Well, but no, here you, you only have one <laughs> hand to do it. They have to get a bushel of things. But, but, I but think, here you, you steal something, then you get out of prison, then you go again, steal something. It's just like a repetitive cycle. See, I think that by fair living conditions, I think that you should be entitled to uh, uh, three meals a day or even like two meals, maybe not lunch. Not everyone eats lunch, but you, you should be given food, water, and a bed to sleep in. There's not even inner city kids that get three meals a day. Right. That's why I'm saying that like it doesn't have yeah. to be three. But I think like I think as long as you're keeping them alive. Like, the point needs. is to imprison basic them. Needs. Basic needs, yeah. I don't think you need to have like a luxury mattress and TV and like all this other thing. No puffy yeah, mattresses. Some people live better in prison than they do out <laughs> in the real world. Why would they? You know, they're getting everything paid for, and our prison systems gives them allowance. You guys know that, right? They get like two hundred bucks a month or what? some shit. Yeah, I thought family provides. No, that a money. lot of the prisons give allowances. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, and what is your fucking tax dollars, Jen? Yours, only yours. <laughs> Clur is charged with two counts of first degree murder and two counts of abandonment of a corpse in the deaths of Carrie Kapesky and Jessica Runyons. He pleads not guilty, of course, and his trial is set for the fall of 2019. Now, I would like to finish the story tonight with a crazy story I read. I can't attest to the validity of the story. It's on this website, Cora. Oh, Quora. Yeah, Quora. I like that site. It's cool. It's a bunch of questions and answers. The, it's a forum. The title of this is, Have You Ever Encountered a Serial Killer and Escaped? And this is what Frances <gasps> Red oh my gosh. wrote. If oh. you want to read what she wrote. Yes, my ex-boyfriend and best friend, Claire Yust. Kyler Yust, just kidding. He killed his ex-girlfriend, Kara, at age 18 in 2007, who was missing for a decade. In 2013, shortly before he went to prison, he and I were together just hanging out, going on blunt cruises, enjoying life. Blunt he, cruises. Blunt cruises. He, like started, yeah. he started to explain that to me that he won't see me for a little while, but he had to go and do something, and I wasn't going to hear from him. It was, a na it was natural, though, for him to disappear on me, and he's done it before. One night in March 2013, we were driving around my hometown in the same town that his ex-girlfriend was missing from. Out of nowhere, he bashed my head into the <gasps> dashboard, zip-tied my throat to the back of his seat, and forced himself upon me. I was traumatized. All these years, we had been friends, and he had never so much as raised his voice at me. All of a sudden, he was beating the living crap out of me and stealing a big part of my trust towards him. After Kyler was finished, he cut off the zip-tie that were, was around my throat. He kissed me and told me that he had to do that to make sure he could trust me, even though we met, fucked, etc. since 2007. Wow. 
That was when he told me he had a girl in the back seat and she prob- was probably dead. <gasps> this seemed, this is the second victim he had killed. I reported my rape and her murder, both which were never taken seriously. Wow. Never taken seriously. The Go local, figure. The local police threw out my statement. I went, <laughs> what? That's the Belton, uh, Belton PD. Serve and protect our nation. Belton PD. finest. I went, I went with my abusive mother even. That's another story. The thing is, I did not cry. I did not show fear to Kyler. I didn't show anything to him. I just asked him that he would take me home. I even played some music I found for him. We started to drive around, getting farther and farther from my house. Out of nowhere, Kyler began to cry and told me he's a bad person and that he only does the things he does because he knows he can get away with them. And he wants to feel wrong for fucking his sex puppet, quoted by Kyler during the attack as well. But he simply doesn't. All these years, I was a pawn to his wild lifestyles. We ended up stopping at a bank with a gas station nearby. He told me to stay in the car as he had to go get out to go over to the gas station to use the restroom and get a drink. As soon as Kyler got out of the car, I took off. I called my mom and we went to the police, made a report that wasn't taken seriously. That's another long story. Seven months after his release, he killed a 21-year-old girl named Jessica, his adopted brother's girlfriend. Mm. He had her body along with his ex-girlfriend in the woods seven miles away from my house. Within hours of him killing Jessica, I was the last person he had contacted wanting to hang out. He ended up burning her vehicle five miles away from his home with his brother, who later committed suicide in jail a few months ago. Wow. Wow. The FBI had later told me that if he... I went with him that day. He would have shot me and himself. I highly doubt a psychopath would kill himself, but that is how I escaped a serial killer and his sheer trust in thinking I would stay in his car. I guess when that's when the mask slipped. He is currently sitting in jail right now, awaiting trial for two counts of first degree murder and two counts of abandoning a corpse. The third girl was never found in our, in our ever looked for because the cops didn't listen to my report or in the system. There you go, Miss Belton, Belton PD, serve so, and protect. So supposedly a third. It's probably way more. Um, so that is my story for Taco Supremo, wow. Alicia. I hope I did that story some justice for you. That was a crazy yeah. ass story. Yeah, and I can't say I love this story because the guy is the the whole kitten thing. The guy is just an yeah. animal. The guy is a. He's uh, worse, yeah. He's just awful. Awful, awful, awful. There's some really awful people in this world. All right, guys. If you really enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button on whatever podcasting app you use. If you really like this episode, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you're absolutely obsessed with this podcast and want to become our stalker, go to talkmurder.com slash join. Become a Taco Supremo. Get a badass t-shirt, sticker swag, a lot of love. Shout it out all over the place. Tell me what story you may do. I'll research it. Dedicate it to you. Every Thursday, Talk Murder Me Podcast. My name is John here with Jen and Nicole. Until next time. Stay clear. What? <laughs> stay clear? <laughs> like, stay cool? <laughs> state, state route, state route, or is it route? State route, route. Doesn't matter. Either state way. route, state route, state route, state route, state route Y, state route Y. I'm going to try both. State route Y, state route Y. Route. Just like the stickers, which I do like, but you're like, all right, if everyone likes it, I'm going to send it. But I was driving, so I couldn't answer. And then literally two minutes later, you're like, okay, I, I submitted it. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, I guess my opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> Jen, we move at a fast pace here. I was driving to Savannah. Well, you, you should you have texted text while you were driving. That's safe. <laughs> I already watched an ad. You think I'm going to go buy this? Oh, let's go buy this right now. <laughs>